What's up guys? Since the amount of questions I get on stream are absolutely unreal, today I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about settings in Rocket League. But before we dive into this, very few people are actually subbed to the channel. I honestly can't believe we just passed 100k subs, but what's even crazier to think about is the amount of subs that we could have if everybody who watched this video right now actually subbed to the channel. But in all seriousness, guys, subbing is completely free, and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, without any further wait, let's talk about settings in Rocket League. All right, guys, so like I said, I'm going to cut straight to the chase and go rapid fire through all the settings. But before I dive into this and just start rambling on and on, I want you to know that this video is going to be a very high level overview of settings, meaning I'm not going to go into much detail about any individual setting. So as you watch through this, I want you to keep an eye out for the little pop-up bar on the top right that's going to be listing out more specific videos that I have for each topic we go over. But yeah, let's talk settings in Rocket League. All right, opening up the settings panel, the first setting at the top of the list, we have unlimited boost in free play. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, turn it on if you want unlimited boost, turn it off if you don't. Text chat, this is what you use to choose what text you see in game. A lot of people like to disable text chat, but personally, I love seeing when people recognize me in game, so I always allow all chats. Voice chat, uh, I highly recommend you disable this. Uh, split screen layout, uh, pretty irrelevant unless you're playing with somebody. Cross platform play, It'd be interesting to know if there's an advantage to having this on or off, but I just have it on by default. Uh, client send rate, you're gonna wanna make sure that this is set to high, and server send rate and bandwidth limit, you're also going to wanna have as high to make sure you give yourself the best connection in online games. Input buffer, there's been actually a ton of talk about this uh, on a channel called Rocket Science, but I think the consensus is default is best. Show competitive divisions, yeah. Uh, show extra mode ranks, yep. Game stat display level, this is those pop-ups that you see in-game when you get a save or an aerial hit. Honestly, I'd recommend turning this one off. Alright, with the gameplay settings done, moving on to camera settings, this is what a lot of people actually want to hear about. So like I said, I have a few videos that go in-depth about camera settings, but here's the short of it. Camera preset, this is a setting that you can see if you have Bacchus mod, where you can load up uh, common pro players' uh, camera settings. It's a really cool setting that not a lot of people know about, so definitely give it a look if you have Bacchus mod. Uh, camera shake, please make sure you have this off. Field of view, generally you want to max this out. Distance, the most popular distances are between 260 and I think 280, uh, so I go with 270. <laughs> Similarly with height, uh, the most common is I believe 90 to 110, uh, so I go with 100. And the most common camera angles are negative 3 to negative 5, so guess what? I use negative four. <laughs> Stiffness, this controls one aspect of how your camera moves. Uh, honestly, just, just put this somewhere in the middle, like 0.5, uh, 0.6, or 0.4, something like that. Uh, swivel speed, I recommend having this high. This is how quickly uh, your camera moves around when you use your right stick. Uh, and transition speed, this is how quickly you move between ball cam and normal cam. I recommend keeping it somewhere in the lower ranges, maybe a 1.10, 1.0, 1.2. Uh, don't go too high with this. Lastly, invert swivel. Highly recommend you have this on. This is going to make it more intuitive to control your camera. All right, moving on, control settings. So first, we're gonna start with the sensitivity settings. And it's been a while since I covered these, so let's talk about it. First, starting at the top of the list, steering sensitivity. Now, this is actually a very influential setting that not a lot of people think to change off default. But something I recommend you do is experiment with a higher steering sensitivity. So by default, your steering sensitivity and aerial sensitivity for that matter, I think should be set to 1.0, but I recommend you jack those up just a little bit and see what you feel comfortable with. I found that I actually really enjoy having a 1.5 steering sensitivity and a 1.8 aerial sensitivity. But I know this is above what a lot of pros use. A lot of them like somewhere in between the ones and the 1.5s. Uh, so feel free to experiment, maybe around the 1.3, 1.4 range uh, with each of these settings and see what you like. 
moving on to dead zone and I'll be honest dead zone settings are a little tricky I have a video that goes way more in depth with this stuff uh, but a good rule of thumb is anywhere between 0 0.05 to 0 0.10 on the controller dead zone and anywhere between uh, you know that 0.4 to even 1.0 range uh, on your dodge dead zone but like I said these are some of the most tricky settings in Rocket League so if you go watch any videos after this one I think the number one video you should watch is my dead zone settings one moving on controller vibration please turn this off vibration intensity please have it at zero ball camera mode oh please toggle push to talk this is irrelevant because we're not using voice chat uh, mouse sensitivity irrelevant unless you're KBM keyboard input uh, irrelevant unless you're K KBM uh, and keyboard aerial safety um, once again only relevant if you're KBM I don't really have a good answer <laughs> sorry KBM players but here's what you've all been waiting for what you actually came to the video for and that is bindings now once again bindings are a very tricky subject maybe not as tricky as dead zone uh, but they're subjective at the end of the day they're super subjective so warning before i reveal my settings here i highly recommend you watch my other settings guide that actually breaks down my binds that i think came out two or three weeks before uh this video but i'll stop putting it off let's talk bindings so my bindings are as follows i'm not going to comment on them i'm not going to try to justify them if you want to hear justifications watch the other video but here we go top to bottom Drive forward is a left stick forward. Uh, drive backwards is left stick backward. Yes, you read that right. I play using these controls. Um, steer right is left stick right. Steer left is left stick left. Uh, jump is X on PlayStation. And actually, let me pull up my Xbox controller so we can convert these. Uh, so yeah, jump is X on PS4 and A on Xbox. Uh, boost is L2, which is LT on Xbox. Power slide is R1, which is RB on Xbox. Ball cam is triangle, which is the same as Y on Xbox. Rear view is right stick down, which is which is the same on Xbox. Uh, air steer right and air steer left are controlled by my left stick. Air pitch up, air pitch down are controlled by my left stick. My air roll right is bound to R2. My air roll left is bound to square, uh, which is the same as X on Xbox. And then all my camera controls are controlled by my right stick. Scoreboard on R2. Skip a music track for what it's worth on R3. No voice chat bind because Rocket League voice chat is terrible. Epic, please add a proper voice chat system. Select music playlist, uh, R3 again, I guess. Uh, a bunch of quick chat hotkeys. You can just rate them as they go down. Uh, text chat, no shortcut. Team text chat, no shortcut. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Going down. Okay, spectator look down. And then, yes, these are all spectator controls. So you can read through them quickly, uh, but don't spend too much time here. So those are my bindings. I know, a little wacky, uh, but they work for me. And if you want more info on bindings, check out the linked video on screen after this one ends. All right, interface tab. Now, interface scale and display scale. Honestly, this is preference, but I have them on 100%. Nameplate scale, this is actually a new setting. Uh, I, I don't know when it was released, but it's pretty recent. Um, and it's actually really important for spotting players out. So if you're a new player, I highly recommend moving your nameplate scale uh, near the right end of this distribution. So anywhere between 150% and honestly, even 200% is completely reasonable uh, and might help you in comp. So give it a shot nameplate mode i set to default match notifications all and then down through here this is all pretty subjective stuff so you can read through uh, but i leave it on the default all right moving on to video settings when it comes to video settings i play for performance i don't really care about quality so if you're the same way and you just want to maximize your fps listen up first thing i do is set my resolution to the max i want to make sure i have the most crisp picture uh, so i can spot people out in game the best uh, so you're going to want to put that on whatever the max is for your monitor. That's going to be 1080p for most people. Uh, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, now for display mode, this is very, very key. I talk about this in my video settings guide. You need to be on full screen. Uh, if you don't play on full screen, you're going to be introducing unnecessary input lag. So please, please, please make sure you play on full screen. Uh, down to vertical sync, have this off. Same reason, if you have it on, you're going to be introducing a ton of input lag. Please keep it off. Um, basic settings, we're going to keep anti-aliasing off to maximize our FPS. Uh, render quality, 
contrary to popular belief, we actually want to have this as high quality uh, because if you don't, if you set it to high performance, everything gets really blurry. And even though you might get better FPS, this is going to make it difficult to play in comp lobbies. So we're going to want to have this on high performance. But past that, we can set everything to performance and just make sure you drop your texture detail to high performance as well to maximize your FPS. Once you do that, make sure your max FPS is set to the highest limit so that you can get the most FPS possible. And past that, your video settings, if they look similar to mine here, should be good. Moving on to the last two tabs, all we've got is audio and chat. Audio, completely subjective. These are the settings I have so that the audio is well balanced uh, when I stream, but really just modify these settings as you go. I'm not gonna waste time talking about it here. And then most importantly, the chat tab. Now, honestly, I need to spend some time customizing this, but basically this tab is just used to customize your quick chats in Rocket League. Make sure to let me know in the comments down below if you wanna see the ultimate quick chat tutorial. Nah, but in all seriousness, guys, I really do hope that was helpful. That is everything you need to know rapid fire about settings in Rocket League. Now, once again, I know that I blazed through that, and I'm sorry if I talk too fast. Definitely feel free to rewind and watch any parts of the video as need be. But yeah, my goal was to give you guys a high-level overview with this tutorial, uh, so hopefully that helped you get your settings in check in the fastest time possible. Quickly though, to the many of you who still don't know, my live coaching program is currently accepting applications for our summer launch. The spring launch was incredibly competitive. We had over 600 applicants, I think, and I can only take like 50 people um, to join each program. So if you want to maximize your chances uh, at getting accepted my coaching program, make sure you send in an application for my coaching program as soon as possible. Link down in the description below. Also, also guys, I'm doing a massive push over on all my social medias, whether that's Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, all those things. So make sure if you haven't already, go follow as soon as possible to get in on future giveaways and tons of other content there. But yeah, guys, best way to get in contact with me going forward is going to be to catch me when I'm live on Twitch. So make sure you follow my Twitch to be the first notified when I go live. Other than that, guys, that's all I've got. So thank you all so much for watching. Thanks again for 100k subs. And you know what? I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers, guys.